with our hiring data scientists. Everything is much more driven by data today. And I wanna go through um, data. I wanna go through analytics. And what's really interesting is, is, is the use of drones, robots, and the internet of things, okay? But um, first, uh, I wanna encourage you, as I said, to volunteer for leadership positions. This is just a, a few of the uh, leadership positions, key, key leadership positions I've had, whether it's IEEE on the board of directors, whether it's IEEE Power and Energy Society, whether it's IEEE Standards Association. And I just started a three-year term on the IEEE Foundation as a director, okay? So again, the sky is the limit, okay? Don't, don't hold yourself back. Volunteer, you have, you have a lot of opportunities, okay? Um, now, you might recognize uh, the fellow uh, Kadim from uh, 2015. This was when I was in Delhi uh, at Indicon and uh, the, the general chair was Professor Minnie Thomas a very, very dear friend of, of mine and my family who was the IEEE Delhi section chair at the time and the general chair of Indicon and hosted at her university, Jamia Milli Islami University in Delhi. Um, 2015, she had me give a tutorial. I, I moderated a panel session and gave a number of talks. I also did um, um, poster session paper reviews for, for prizes. I was one of the judges that reviewed many, many of the, of the research papers for many of the graduate students. Um, over three days, I remember doing that. This was a nice, nice memory, a nice photo from, uh, from 2015. Okay. Um, this is, this is what I mean about networking, right? <laughs> With IEEE, you meet, meet many people and, and have uh, long lasting friendships, okay? So these are the, the topics I'm gonna go over and I'm gonna highlight these. Now, we just finished a book, a new book a couple of years ago called Big Data Application in Power Systems, published in 2018 by El Sevier. It's a paperback book, so it's not very expensive. And I wrote the first chapter of the book called A Holistic Approach to Becoming a Data-Driven Utility. Holistic meaning company-wide and having all your decisions being driven by data, okay? So let me, let me highlight some of these key points. Um, the first speaker today talked about solutions and uh, problem solving, you know? And it's very important. Uh, when you're a student in school, they teach you in engineering school how to solve problems. When you get out in, into industry, what's very important is being a very good problem solver. Um, you won't be solving the same problems that you solved at, work, at, at school, but what's important is knowing how to solve problems. What's very important today is holistic solutions. That's what we're transitioning to with what we call smart grid. We don't really use the term smart grid anymore. We use grid modernization. We're modernizing the grid. Um, so a holistic solution is company-wide holistic, but a solution is a set of technology components integrated together to successfully interoperate to meet the business needs of the customer, okay? For Power and Energy Society, many times it's an electric utility. Um, what we teach students at university is, is don't just stop with the device. The device has two-way communications capability and can be a node in a bigger network. The, the holistic solution has much more value to the customer than the microprocessor-based device by itself, okay? So we can take these microprocessor-based devices and build holistic solutions. And that, that's what the customer wants. So you have to teach yourself to see the big picture. Always look for the big picture, okay? Success is not just technology, but it's industry standards and policy. 
We spent, I, I spent a lot of time working in standards. That's why in the substations committee, I volunteered in 1987 to start writing the standards for substations. And within one year, I volunteered to be the working group chair. And then I became the subcommittee chair and then the chair of the entire committee. That's 500 experts around the world to write all the standards for substations, okay? Um, so, so writing standards and knowing standards is the key to success today because technology has to interoperate. These devices have to be able to talk to each other and exchange information. We have to, we have to, with culture, we have to change the culture of people to allow technology to operate closed loop. Sometimes we have to take a human out of the loop and let the logic do its thing by itself, okay? And we're distributing the intelligence around the electric grid. It's not just in the control center anymore, but it's in the substation. And it's actually at the edge of the grid. Where homes have rooftop solar panels, we're putting grid edge controllers on the low voltage network outside your home, okay? Which we have to do because of the increased volatility because of the inter intermittency of, of the sun, okay? We're also doing much more with microgrids. A microgrid is, is really cool. It's, it's, a, it's a small power power system in itself that it has renewable generation and um, enough to meet the load and it can island itself and still operate. So if, if the grid around it is, is having a problem, it can island or disconnect and still continue to operate. We're, we're, uh, we're focused on big data today. We're putting more specialized sensors out in the field Customers have an observability strategy, which means they're looking at what data do, am I getting back today from the field? And do I need additional sensors? Do I need more data? Do I need different types of data? Because everything is data driven, okay? Now, we're also developing new analytics to, to make better use of the data that we're getting and we're focused not so much on user interface anymore, but the total user experience. Like uh, we saw earlier in one of the talks, uh, Steve Jobs from Apple, right? Steve Jobs said, I don't want people to just use my devices at Apple. I want them to ex have a positive experience. It's a total experience with, with Apple devices. And that's where we're geared with today is a user experience with the technology. We also, what's very important for data management is the convergence of IT, the operations and IT have to be seamless for enterprise data management. An advanced distribution management system today is, is being, being implemented by many electric utilities to manage the increasing complexity of the distribution part of the grid why? Because we're integrating a lot of renewables. We're integrating a lot of, uh, of sun, of solar, and wind. And this is making the, the grid much more complex. Instead of electricity just flowing in one direction, it now flows in two directions. Okay. But what's very key is the integration. See, on, on, this, on, on the implementation of an advanced distribution management system, 70% of the total project cost is the cost to integrate that system with all the other systems that the customer has. Integration is very key today. And uh, one of the previous speakers talked a lot about Smart Grid and I'm, I'm on the steering, the strat steering committee of the IEEE Smart Grid organization. The home, the home of IEEE Smart Grid is in the Power and Energy Society and we, we have 14 different IEEE societies all working together in IEEE Smart Grid. But what's very important before we think about Smart Grid, we need to make sure we have a strong grid. It's very important, strong grid before Smart Grid. The communications infrastructure and the IT infrastructure have to be strong before we start adding a lot of new things, new applications on the, on the grid. If we add a new application and we have a weak communications infrastructure, 
the application may not work properly. We may not get the performance that we pay for, that we expect, because the underlying foundation is weak, okay? Remember that before smart grid, okay? What's very important too is managing data and getting the most value from your data. Um, I wrote an article in 2003 in IEEE Power and Energy Magazine. This is the magazine for IEEE PES members. And I introduced these concepts to the industry in 2003. The concept of operational data and non-operational data. Operational data is the time series of data that we're used to sending to the control center at an electric utility. And, and that's what the operators use to monitor and control the power system, okay? You can see my, my dog in the background. My dog just, uh, my dog is with me uh, all day as I work from home and uh, he keeps me company. So he he's learned a lot about uh, IEEE and all about Power and Energy Society uh, with me not traveling and being home every day. <laughs> uh, so operational data is, is very important. It's a time series of data that we use in the control center. What we haven't gotten the most benefit from is what we call the non-operational data. This is new information that we have now with microprocessor-based devices. When I was leading the, um, leading the revision of the IEEE standard on SCADA, Supervisor Control and Data Acquisition in the early 1990s, we came up with a new term called Intelligent Electronic Device, or IED. That's a term we use for microprocessor-based devices. There's two parts to the definition. One is it has an internal processing capability. And second is that it has two-way communications. And the two-way communications is what's, what's very important, okay? Um, so non-operational data is um, points or files like a digitized waveform, a sequence events report. And this is information that the operators don't need in the control center, but there's 25 to 30 other groups in the customer organization that have a need for this data, okay? And this is the characteristics between operational and non-operational data. Non-operational is on demand, it's typically historical, and it's both points and a data file. Operational data is what we're used to for many, many years sending to the control center. So one of the things that all the societies in IEEE are working with now is the internet of things, the new productivity revolution. We're bringing together intelligent machines with big data and analytics and connecting it with people at work. And this is connecting people any place, any way, and any time for intelligent operations. And this is really, I mean, the near future here is that we'll have much more data, more readily available with new analytics so that we can have new value from the analytics and make more timely decisions. So this is gonna save a tremendous amount of money and what we're all working with now is no matter what society we're in in IEEE is, how can we leverage this, right? To get the most benefit for our company or for who we work for or the, or the project we're working on. And one of the things we're always looking at is new analytics. What are new, an, new areas of analytics we can provide more value to the industry? With the electric grid, it's with smart meters, it's with outage, with reliability of the power system, with renewables, and with the end use customer. Okay, these are all areas that we're, we're doing a lot, lot more work in. And in signal processing, you, you could look at um, new areas of analytics and in computer society. And, and we'll, you know, computer society is, is doing a lot of work with drones and robotic inspection devices that I'll talk about here in a minute. Um, so I, I mentioned that what's important here is bringing together information technology and operations technology. Uh, we need to bring together the electrical and the information infrastructure so it's seamless. The reason is we have very valuable information 
from data sources on the operations side. And if we have a disconnect between these two groups, we, we won't be able to get this valuable information from the operations side, bring it across the firewalls over to the corporate side so that uh, many, many groups, stakeholder groups can access it, okay? So on the left side here is what we find in many organizations today. It's very siloed. Every individual group in the organization has its own systems, its own microprocessor-based devices, and its own databases or repositories. And we say it's siloed. Each group is really only concerned with doing well within the group and they don't share information with each other. That's why I say we need holistic solutions. Holistic means no silos anymore. All the groups are working together like I show on the right here. The IT infrastructure here with a federated data mart and we're bringing together all the, all the data sources in the enterprise, the systems, the microprocessor-based devices, the databases, so that the operators in the control center, the operational users, and the non-operational users, again, 25 to 30 other groups within the organization all have the data that they need. So the end result is on the left here, we have standard architectures in the field. This is a standard architecture for an electric utility substation with a master data concentrator, slave data concentrators, and a number of microprocessor-based devices or intelligent electronic devices, say in the substation and out in the field. On the right here is what, where we, is what our goal is. In this color here are all the different data sources in the enterprise, and in green here, is all the different users in the organization that now have, <coughs> now have the data they need. Well, how do we do this? Well, we first hold a workshop with the customer and bring everyone, all the stakeholder people up to the same level of understanding with, with enterprise data management. What is it that we're doing today that this organization needs to do? We look at the data maps of all the data sources, whether it be microprocessor-based devices, systems, databases, and we create standard data templates. Which data in each of these devices has value to at least one stakeholder group in the utility? Then we put together an enterprise data requirements matrix. We want to map the data points of value in these data sources to the stakeholder groups that will use the data. Then we make sure that the architectures that we're using, the substation automation architectures, will facilitate, they'll um, support extracting the data points of value, concentrating those, and then sending them across the firewall to what we call an enterprise data mart on the corporate network, okay? So, I've been involved with standard work uh, for many, many years with power with the electric grid uh, on the board of directors of the IEEE Standards Association. In 2010, we developed this called Smart Grid Conceptual Reference Model of seven domains and how those domains are interconnected together. I just helped, uh, I was one of 11 smart grid experts chosen by the United States government in 2017 and we spent two years and we just, we just um, updated this conceptual reference model, which is public information on the website of NIST, N-I-S-T, the National Institute of Standards and Technology. And you can find that on the website. But the most important thing, if you've ever done a project at a university or tried to develop a product with a vendor or at a, at a customer written a, a procurement spec to buy equipment. The question is what standards are important? What industry standards? Why well, IEEE has identified over 100 standards with SmartGrid. The IEC has identified over 100 standards. Well, how do you know which standards to use? You can't go over hundreds of standards yourself. Well, these 16 standards are the most important standards for SmartGrid. We call these the foundational 
standards for smart grid. If you just concern yourself with these 16, that's all you need to do. So um, we, we spent um, a long time, 25 of us, and we looked through all these standards and we said, we need to help the industry and narrow this down to a, a much smaller list for people to use. And that, that's what this is. This is the foundational standards for smart grid, okay? And what's nice is today, there's one worldwide standard for control center to control center communications. There's two worldwide standards for control center to field equipment, and really just two worldwide standards for uh, communications with field equipment. So there's we've converged on many on, on less much less standards. So it's much easier today to figure out what standards to use. Okay. Well, let me let me finish with some new work here which was really cool. It's on, uh, on uh, drones and ro robotic inspection devices. So these, these new sources of data provide us photography, imagery, we call LIDAR and FOTAR imagery and infrared sensors. We can see hotspots in equipment. This data has a lot of value. We use it with asset management. We use it with geographic information systems. We use it with outage management systems, and we use it with uh, storm damage assessment. Um, so like a drone will capture a lot of uh, video. Uh, and, and, you know, we have to, you know, how do you, how do you go through that video and really figure out where the problems are? So what we've done is we've automated image analysis to create value. We used to, in the beginning, have humans watch hours of streaming video to find problems, but now we've, we've done a good job of automating that image analysis. Um, now, I, I conducted a brief ad hoc survey, informal survey, and it showed me that uh, a coordinated industry response to the emergence of unassisted aerial vehicles and robotics can speed time to value. So, let me go back here. This device here is a robotic inspection device that typically a helicopter or an airplane needs to bring up on top of the transmission line and then drop it on top of the conductor. What we've done, what some utilities have done now is to miniaturize some of these robotic inspection devices so we can connect them to a drone. We can fly the drone up to the top of the transmission conductor and have the drone release the robotic inspection device saves a tremendous amount of, of money because we don't need an airplane and we don't need a helicopter, okay? So my observations were the, the power utility use of these UAVs and robotics is really in its infancy, that they're an effective and efficient means to monitor the infrastructure health and perform remedial work but how the raw and analyzed data is stored, routed, or otherwise made available across the utility organization is different for each utility. So I'll finish with, with some recommendations. We need to de-silo the utility. In other words, don't have each group do its own thing, but have data sharing. So de-silo the utility and its approach to data management. We need to achieve the organization-wide value creation and a positive business case for new technologies. And that makes the customer more nimble and competitive. They can make decisions more quickly. And because of that, they can be more competitive. Because things are in their infancy, just starting, now is the time to apply holistic data management thinking to how these UAVs and robotic inspection devices outputs are managed for value creation. Uh, we, the industry, we should determine and pursue common requirements for UAVs and ro robotic technologies and push the purveyors, the consultants and the suppliers to comply with them. We need standard data formats. And this is why our standards groups are, are beginning to look at this and in standard uh, data analytics based on open source archi architectures and true enterprise-wide integration of the information. We definitely want to avoid proprietary solutions. 
I mean, we don't want a customer getting it, getting locked into a proprietary way of doing things that limits their future options. And they also end up paying a lot more money than they should be paying. So this is, uh, this is uh, very, very interesting. It's new, it's growing tremendously. Uh, drones now uh, in the United States, utilities can now can, can fly drones beyond line of sight, okay? Used to be limited to line of sight. <clears throat> now uh, with wa special waivers, they can go beyond line of sight. So there's much, much more value now to, to what we're getting. And as we miniaturize more robots, we, we can use drones. So this is, this is a, a, lot of, uh, a lot of work being done here, but there's a, there's a lot more value here that we haven't even reached. You know, we're just, we're just starting with this, okay? I'll stop there. I think, um, yeah, we're about at, at the end time. I tried to go quickly because I got a late start and um, I'm just very happy to be with you all. I really applaud what you're doing, especially with the three societies. Um, as you can as you can see, with 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 my 50 years in IEEE, I, I I love IEEE. I love my involvement. Uh, I'm 69 years old, but I I'm 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 not stopping. I'm not retiring. I'm having more fun today than I've ever had, particularly with IEEE. I hope I hope you continue to be involved. I hope you uh, volunteer for many leadership positions. I hope you expand your network as much as you can. I hope you do everything you can to learn as much about the technology as you can and continue to, you know, to volunteer for as many things as you can in IEEE and continue to be involved, okay? I, uh, I, I say that I have 50 years. This is my 50th year. I don't know if I'll have another 50 years, but I know I'm gonna have many, many more years in IEEE uh, and I look forward to that. So thank you very much again for this opportunity. Thank you, sir, for sharing such a wonderful presentation with us. Ending with today's wonderful session with all the honorable speakers with us. Now I request all the participants to put down their questions and doubts to our speakers to be answered. So I'll, I'll pass it back to um, uh, Adeem. Uh, thank you. So, uh, yes, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, oh. okay. uh, anchor, uh, uh, am I audible? Yes, sir. You are audible. Okay. So, uh, so much Sri Kant. Actually, uh, today we have 73rd uh, uh, anniversary of uh, our uh, honorable speaker. So our uh, immediate, uh, sir, our immediate past year, Mr. Sri Kant Singh uh, has made this video in the short time. So thank you, uh, Sri Kant. So uh, now, Anchor, it is over to you, please. Okay. Now I humbly invite Dr.